Hi everybody, I hope you're well. In today's video, I've come out to the Peak District to tell you a little story about how and why a few years ago I made big changes to the way that I approach wedding photography and why I think those changes have been so good for me and my business. But more importantly, I'm going to be telling you about how, if you're feeling similar to how I was a few years ago, you can make similar changes to your approach to give you so much more satisfaction in your work. So, let's crack on. So to make today's video, I've come out to a place called Winnett's Pass, which is in Derbyshire in the UK. It is absolutely amazing here. Just look at these views. It really is an incredible place. So I've come out here tonight, obviously, to make this video, but I must admit, the other reason that I like coming to these locations to make these videos is also so that I can scope out places for future portrait shoots. I have done a video around here before. The hill that you see in the distance there is called Mam Tor, and I did a shoot with my friend Beth there probably a couple of years ago now. I'll link to it above, but I also think that there's so much more scope for cool locations around here. So fingers crossed, <laughs> in the future, I'll be back here and we'll do a full portrait shoot because I do think it would make absolutely stunning portrait photographs around here. So these days, thanks to social media, it's very easy for us to see lots of examples of other wedding photographers' work. And with so many online training and workshops available, it's very easy to educate yourself and improve as a wedding photographer from home. You don't even need to have photographed a wedding to have a good idea of what good wedding photography looks like. But back when I first photographed my first wedding in 2006, apart from getting wedding photography books out of the library, that abundance of of educational material just wasn't available. To my knowledge, at the time, there was only one DVD available, which was called The Masters of Wedding Photography, which I bought and I'd watch it all the time, but, but that, was, that was about it. Everything else, I just learned more or less on the job. So when I started out, I wasn't looking at other photographers' work, mainly because I couldn't, as I say, because people didn't blog back then and there was no social media. Now that has its upside because it meant I was learning organically and I was developing my own style because I wasn't being influenced by other photographers but there was a huge downside to that too. Because I was so new I assumed that wedding photographers were there to capture very standard things. The wedding dress, the rings, the flowers, the venue, lots of group shots and I made sure that I captured absolutely every little detail. The list was born. <laughs> So, what is the list? Well, for me, it was an imaginary checklist of photographs which I had to take at every single wedding because, as far as I knew, that was just what wedding photographers did. And the more weddings that I photographed, the longer this list would grow. It wasn't good enough to just photograph the dress. I had to photograph it in landscape, in portrait. I had to photograph the dress in natural light and then with off-camera flash. I needed a full lens shot and then close-up details as well. With the bouquets, I had to photograph the bride's bouquet on its own and then with the bridesmaid's bouquet at the side and so on and so on and as this imaginary list grew longer in my head it would obviously take me longer and longer on a wedding day to get through all those shots. It wasn't just the wedding day either which I was approaching in a really regimented way. By 2009-2010 when I started blogging regularly my blogs were also starting to follow a really fixed approach. I would show firstly a photograph of the dress then a photograph of the shoes then the bride having her makeup done. My approach was just far, far too fixed and regimented. And as I said earlier, this just all came from the fact that I was just assuming that a wedding photographer should concentrate on capturing every single detail because I didn't know otherwise. What I did know, however, was that the list was making the job stressful and not as enjoyable as I knew it should be. And after a few years of photographing weddings, I started to naturally realize that this, this list, whatever you want to call it, was holding me back from taking the shots which I really wanted to concentrate on, those being the images which captured the emotion of the day, the real moments.
So by this point in my wedding photography career, I knew that I loved two aspects of the wedding day the most. The real moments with genuine emotion and portraits of the bride and groom. But although I loved taking those shots, I was still weighed down by this list in my head. Then a couple of really important things happened. Firstly, I started second shooting for wedding photographer friends of mine. These were not weddings which I was being paid to second shoot. I would just help out at my friend's weddings for free and they would do the same for me. And I absolutely loved it. If you haven't tried second shooting before, I couldn't recommend it enough because there's nothing better than shooting a wedding without any pressure whatsoever. And the complete freedom to work on the shots which you really want to take. This really reinforced to me what it was about wedding photography that I truly loved. And that was capturing the people, the moments, and the true story of the day, not just taking lots of still life photographs of details and scene setting shots. And at the same time, I also watched Tyler work in Creative Live class. And Tyler's approach of pure documentary wedding photography really hit home with me. Now, if you haven't seen this class, I would massively recommend it. And I will leave a link to that Creative Live class in the description because it is really, really good. So I knew that something had to change in my approach and slowly but surely, although I would still obviously take detail shots just as I do now because ultimately they are important I started taking less of them and more importantly I started to show far less of them online and the less I was showing online the more confident I became in taking less of them on the wedding day which then freed me up to concentrate on the images which I really wanted to take myself and which I always knew would carry far more importance to my bride and grooms and their families in the future and now I'm at the point where virtually the only images which I show publicly are either real moments or couple portraits, which is exactly how I want it to be. I do still take detail shots, of course, but I don't show them very much, if at all, probably never actually, because I want the couples who book me to prioritize the moments and the portraits just as I do. And finally, I feel as though I've got rid of that list which was just weighing down so heavy on me. Now, the other important thing to mention is that I now aim to take detailed photographs in a way which also tells a story. I try to give them context. So rather than just being a still life shot of the wedding rings on their own, I now aim to take detailed shots like these. So these shots are detailed shots, but they're also much more than that. They are also telling a story about the day and ultimately, they are so much better for that, in my opinion. So if you can relate to this story and you'd like to try and change in a similar way to me, then I would recommend taking the same approach which I did. Only show the images which you love and which you would like to be booked for in the future. Just on the side, I made a whole video on this, which I'll link to up here. So I'd really recommend watching that video because in that video, I talk about in much more detail how to attract the right couples for you. And I say, showing the images that you want to be booked for over time will start to help you attract the couples who are a great fit for you and totally get your style. So please don't fall into the trap that I did and feel as though you have to take shots of absolutely every detail that you see on a wedding day because you don't. And ultimately, although it is important to document the details, those are not the photographs which are truly going to stand the test of time because they just don't carry any emotional impact. Whereas it is the photographs of the people, the moments and the emotion which will outlast all the other photographs which we take on a wedding day and that I now realize is what wedding photography is all about.